Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. We're the Movie Couple. I'm Dustin. I'm Wendy. And we just got back from WonderCon and we're going to talk about Batman vs. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the movie. It's animated. It's by Warner Brothers. Uh, it is, uh, to me, I didn't even know there were like comic books that existed that pitted, uh, there was like a Batman vs. Ninja Turtle at all, but I don't hate the fandom. In fact, I welcome it. So when I saw this on the schedule, I said, we gotta We're, go. We gotta go check this out. It's on Sunday. Let's go see it. And was, we did. Yeah, and I was so excited to see this because I I haven't read the comics, but I knew that the comics existed, and I remember seeing like a few panels from one of the Batman team ups with the Ninja Turtles, and I was so excited. Yeah. And the fact that they were just. I, I didn't even know that they were doing this. You know, like, Batman Ninja I had heard of, and I had seen some promotional right. for it. I had no idea this was even being done yeah. until Wendy told me. And I was like, wait, what? Yeah, we're going to check this out. Yeah, so we should give you guys a, a little bit of a breakdown of this movie. So it is set in Gotham, mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> it, it it's with Batman and his team, which comprises of Batgirl and Robin, trying to figure out why certain machines are going missing and yeah. and why it is going missing and the turtles uh have followed those same similar clues to gotham and that's kind of how the two teams sort of meet up to take down the bigger bad which involves should we say it hmm? we should say who is the big bads that are involved well is that oh spoiler? yeah i think the big bads telling who the big bads are is not a spoiler <laughs> okay. because it's actually a mashup of a it couple is a of mashup them. Um, there's going to be, uh, there was Raja Ghoul and Shredder. Of course, well, I think you could say those were the two main bad guys. Well, I mean, you really can't have the turtles really involved revolves. without Shredder, so it totally yeah. makes sense. But it is ultimate, it's like the ultimate fandom mashup. You've got like the turtles, mm -hmm. you've got uh, a lot of the characters that you know and love from Batman. It really did focus more around Batman's story. It's really the Batman universe with Ninja Turtles coming into it. Because yeah. that was their big IP, but it does still have a lot of Ninja Turtle characters, even though there were some missing. Yeah, there were some missing, but I'm okay with it because it's a very full and fleshed out story. There was mm -hmm. a lot to do. There's a lot to take in, so I'm totally okay with it. Uh, I The animation style reminds me of like the classic, more classic animated comic book um, Batman, which I really liked a lot more. I, I, at first I was like, oh, they're going with this style, and then as we kind of fell into it, I really enjoyed it. I didn't really enjoy how they animated the turtles. Uh, yeah. I think it's not a bad thing. I think we were just used to the like the '90s, it's the early '90s yeah, Ninja the, Turtles. Yeah, the, 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 well, they have a little bit more of like a snout. Yeah. And here they were kind of flat faced. Yeah. Which I kind of I didn't but like. I, it was kind of like what they did with the modern Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Where they kind of made their face a little bit more human-esque, I guess? But I think they chose this specific style for the turtles because I bet this is similar to what they look like in the comics. Yeah. And it looked like they try to follow the comics as closely as possible. Um, this movie is very funny because you have Batman who's brooding and very serious and he's like, I must save Gotham. And then you have the turtles, specifically Mikey, <laughs> who's just like, yeah, man, okay, cool, pizza, let's go. They did Michelangelo Perfect. perfectly. Perfect. I mean, he <laughs> follows his character uh, traits to the T, and everything he did was incredibly, wonderfully, um, disruptively funny. Yeah, disruptive and, is a good word for Mikey. And <laughs> it was just the exact same way that I would always picture Mikey. Yeah. And it was just everything he did also didn't fall in, nothing he did fell into like the um any of his tropes or like a repeat joke it was just mikey's character being the way it is and you just falling in love with this character mm -hmm. uh i also thought the fight scenes were animated really really well it's very brutal so don't yeah. think that it's a cartoon the turtles are involved oh it's fun because it's got mikey that it doesn't have those Batman factors. It certainly does. You're seeing people's face getting like bashed in. You're getting, yeah. you're seeing like body parts. You're seeing some, some serious There's some pretty casualties. Deaths. Yeah. It's but, not graphic like, yeah. uh, like Castlevania. It's not quite like that. It's actually much more toned down than that, but it, the, the, the gruesomeness of some of these, uh, fight scenes and deaths are, Definitely, the message yeah. is definitely there and clear. So, and I like the way they balanced that too. They they, they had those moments where everyone in the audience was like, "Ooh," yeah. 
because it was a pretty brutal death, but they didn't rely on the blood, the gore, the graphicness of it. They kind of showed you, yeah, this happened, and yeah, he's dead, but it never really got into, like, Castlevania is actually a really good example of Very the graphic. other end of the spectrum. So, um, but yet not only just the graphicness, but like you said, the fight scenes were really fun, really interesting. They built each other's character up very well and kind of showing their different fight styles, which mm -hmm. is always fun to watch when you're watching someone like Batman or someone like the Ninja Turtles to see them grow. Different fighting styles, you mm -hmm. know, like one, one versus four and like a certain style that Batman has versus the, the turtle style and the way they teamwork. So it all plays really well. I think the, the showrunners, the animators, the writers, all the creators that were a part of this, the voice actors as well, um, really did this project justice and I am ready for a sequel. I think it's that good. Oh yeah, I am definitely wanted to see a, this entire cast work, a cast and crew on the next sequel. It was just a really enjoyable show to watch mm -hmm. and honestly I was so afraid <laughs> going into this. I was like, oh my god, this could be really, really cool or it could be really, really bad. Because yeah. you've seen, you know, there's the gambit of everything on how things are, how things turn out. So, but... In this case, it was a really good one. Another cool fact is that Troy Baker voiced both Batman and the Joker, and that's, that's right. not been done be according to the, the panel that we sat in at. Uh, it hasn't been done before, and it's... For the actor, it was kind of like a fanboy moment of, yes, I want to do it, and oh my god, am I doing this at the same time? Because it has to be very distinct, and I mean, his Joker sounded very much like the Mark Hamill yeah. version of the Joker, which is, to me, like the classic Joker. Like, I like it. Like, I love that version. And he uh, definitely emulated that, and I think it worked. But he made it his own, and I think it worked out. Yeah, and at first, it's kind of it does kind of jar you a little bit, because when you see the animation and the voice, that voice is what really kind of grabs you and connects you, but it's a completely different kind of animation mm -hmm. that you expect. But I think having that familiar voice really does carry you through kind of those awkward moments of trying to get used to the animation. But then from there on out, it didn't bother me at all kind of a thing. They did a really good job on introducing a new style of animation, but still having that nice grounded root of um, what we have seen in the past and what we love in the past. Yeah. So the animation is always, a, this was a really good score for me, I think. So I highly recommend seeing this when it comes out either on digital on May 14th or out on Blu-ray on June 4th. If you, can get, if you can get your hands on it, I would highly recommend watching this. It is a great watch. I mean, I would say just go get it digital when it's out so you can see it as soon as possible. It mm -hmm. is really, really good. You're in for a good time when you go and see this. So we're happy that we caught this at Comic-Con, and we hope that you check it out. And when you do, come back to this video so you can let us know whether uh, you liked it or not. What was your favorite part about Batman versus Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? And have you also read some of the original comics? Because I know there's actually a couple of them. I've only, I only know that they exist, and I've seen like a few panels. But if you've read it and you've watched the movie, tell us what you think. Tell us what, how you thought that this was executed with changing this kind of weird IP into something that was just amazing to watch. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.